Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and the Mavic Air 2 has a number of built-in flight modes between quick shots, point of interest, trace mode, and a number of other autonomous flight modes. This thing comes packed with a ton of things that it can do without you even having to touch the controller. And those can both be a blessing or a curse depending on if you know how to use them, when to use them, and also just how well they work. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is first off showing you how to access all of these modes. I'll also be going through the differences between them as well as going and showing the accuracy of them. So for the tracking, how well does it track? I'll be hopping on my electric skateboard to see if it can track that. And then possibly if it can do that, I'll probably be jumping into my vehicle to see if it can keep up there. And then in the end, I'll just be giving you my overall opinion of are these autonomous flight modes worth it or should you just stick to manually doing everything with your drone? So with that being said, let's hop right into showing you how to access these autonomous flight modes. All right, so let's get started. I have my drone behind me right now. And one thing to mention is that you cannot access quick shots when you're on the ground and not in the air but you can with the tracking modes, which is actually pretty cool. So if you wanted to use your drone camera for some reason to just track a subject, maybe as like a secondary camera or something, you could. Obviously it doesn't have audio out of it, but to do this, all you gotta do is draw a rectangle around the subject that you want to track. So in my case, I'm gonna track myself. You draw that, it will lock on, and Spotlight will begin working. As you can see, as I move around, I'm not touching the controller whatsoever but it is moving the gimbal by itself. And it's actually surprisingly accurate at how well this moves. You probably cannot see me in my primary camera anymore, but if I just literally jogged across the frame, it can track me incredibly well while it's just here on the ground. So if you wanted something like this to just set as a secondary camera when you're filming a video like me right now or something, then you could do that. Obviously not ideal and it's a little odd use for the camera, but it does work. So with that being said, I'm gonna stop that and get to taking off. So once you've taken off, you do now have access to quick shots. And so starting off with quick shots, the name pretty much tells you all about them. And they really are just quick shots that you can get out of the drone that allow you to go and share those clips incredibly easily as it will go and put together a video for you with audio and speed ramping and everything. And then you can go and share that on social media or wherever you wanna share it. So it makes that really easy to do if you plan on going and sharing your photos and videos really quickly. So to access these quick shots modes, all you gotta do is make sure you are in video mode and then click on the little film strip right above the shutter button. And then the second to bottom button here is called quick shot. And from here is where you can access all of the six different quick shot modes that the Mavic Air 2 has to offer. So just to run through really quickly what this does have is it's got a droney mode. Droney mode is basically a simple pullback shot that goes and can go to a distance of however far you want, pretty much, up to 390 feet. And while I'm on this, just one quick thing to mention is that quick shots are highly customizable. So if you wanna go and have a super far pullback, you could do that. Or if you want a super close one, you can go down to 90 feet. So quick shots, not even just on this droney mode, all of the different modes. All the other modes have a ton of customizability as far as the distance you wanna fly from your subject or how far you want to go in total. So that is something awesome with quick shots that the other autonomous flight modes have, but the quick shots just has built in. So getting back to talking about the modes, as you can see here, the droney, it shows even a little preview for all of the modes. So I'm not gonna talk too much because you'll be able to even see what it does, but I will be giving you examples of how this works in just a second. Following that, you've got rocket mode. That is basically a straight up shot. You've also got circle mode, and circle mode is not the same thing as point of interest. Circle mode can function similarly, but it does typically have a ramping speed effect that is applied when you go to share it. And point of interest mode, you can do that, but you do have to do that manually in post. Following that, you've got something similar to this point of interest or circle mode, and that is helix. But helix adds a fun twist to it as that will go and start at a close distance and then slowly over time get further and further away. I've used this one a couple of times, especially back when I was in Arizona with my Mavic Mini. I love this quick shot. This is probably my favorite quick shot out of all of them. It's just a super unique shot and is one that is very difficult to get manually. So this is one 
that having this autonomous mode here is just very great to have in comparison to if you wanted to do this manually. Second to last, you've got Boomerang, and Boomerang is exactly as it sounds. It'll go and basically look like a boomerang. So as if you threw a boomerang, as you know, boomerang goes out pretty far and comes back and returns to you, at least if you can figure out how to throw them. I've never been able to throw a boomerang in my life. But if you do know how to do that, then the drone can do exactly that. And then the final quick shot mode here is Asteroid. And Asteroid basically creates a tiny earth when it goes and zooms out. This one is pretty cool as it's such a unique shot that you don't really see anywhere else and it is ideal for quick sharing on social media. Because this is just one that basically shows your entire environment in a cool graphical format and it's just something that looks really cool and draws viewers attention in. So with that being said, let's go right back up to Droney and show you how to use these quick shot modes. So, now that I've selected my type of mode that I want to be on, you can go and customize it to the distance that you'd like to go to. I'm going to say 210 feet. I have no reason for choosing that other than it's kind of in the middle. So what you've got to do, go and fly your drone where you would like it to start at. So for me, I'll start it from here. And as you'll see, if you've got a human in the shot, it will actually go and automatically detect that. So you don't even have to draw a box or anything like that. You can just click the plus button and it will begin locking on, my, on myself. So once you've done that, all you got to do is press the start button. It'll count down and then it'll begin its quick shot mode. So it'll begin recording automatically for you. It'll begin its automatic ascent and it'll do the quick shot for you. It'll even give you a little progress of what it is doing and how far into the shot it is. Currently it's at a little over 50%. During these modes you can't adjust the gimbal, it does that all for you, but if you happen to almost run into something or it's an emergency and you need to stop your drone, you can use the controls yourself to stop the quick shot mode at any point in time. And you can also go and use the return to home button on your controller. If you just give it a quick press, that'll instantly stop any of these autonomous flight modes and it will stop the drone right where it is. It won't return the drone to home unless you press and hold which will return the drone to home but if you just quick tap it it'll stop and it effectively is the same as pressing the cancel button on the app itself. So if you want to keep your fingers down onto your controller which is something that you definitely should focus on doing then it will go and stop the autonomous flight mode by pressing that button. So talking aside, usually if I wouldn't have canceled that and interfered with the direction of this drone, it would go and automatically return to its starting point. So I did go and start over here and it would have went and returned to here. So moving on to the next mode, we've got that rocket mode. So I'm gonna go and fly over myself, start about right here customize it. I'm only going to go to about 110 feet because apparently there is a manned aircraft nearby right now, so I'm not going to risk that. Just got to go and choose your subject once again. Press the start button. It'll count down and it will begin the shot for you. And just to prove it, I am not touching any of these controls. It does this entirely automatically. So not that you'd be doubting that, but it is doing this entirely automatically, which is super cool. This time around, once the quick shot is complete, I'm not gonna cancel it, I'm not gonna touch the controller. I'm gonna allow it to return to where it was just to show you how it goes and returns to its original position. So it is coming down right now. It'll even move the gimbal back to the original position. And there you go. Once it is returned to its original position, it'll stay where it is. So now what I'm going to do is not pain you guys with watching me go through every single one of these quick shot modes because getting them started is exactly the same for every single one, but they do all look different in their final results. So I'm going to go through, cue all of these, go through the shots, get some shots, and then I'll talk about them in just a second after I went through all of them. Okay, so I just finished the last quick shot mode and that was Asteroid. That one was pretty fun. Basically, it takes a 360 image at the end, so it goes up into the sky and takes a bunch of images. I thought that was pretty cool. Never seen that done before. So now that you're done with your quick shots, how do you access them? It's actually really easy. All you've got to do is click the little play button below the shutter and you will see all of your quick shot modes. And it even goes and adds the little tiny icon on the video itself to show you what mode that was in. So it gives you both the original clip and that is unedited, there's no music, there's no speed ramping, nothing. And then it also gives you the DJI edited clip. So for example, if I go and click on the Helix version, 
it'll go and first of all have to download the videos. So to download it, you just click the little download button. Once the clip is downloaded onto your device, it'll go and automatically begin creating the quick shot. So what I was saying before about it going and creating the quick shot, before it doesn't actually do that, sadly. It will have to go and generate the quick shot within the DJI Fly app. So that's one thing to note if you're somebody who goes and grabs your clips typically off of your drone, you're only gonna be getting the raw video. But if you go and generate it within the DJI Fly app, then you can get access to the DJI created quick shot. And so this is meant to simplify the process for those looking to go and share quickly on social media, but for people like myself who are fine doing the manual work and putting together a quick shot, you can do that yourself in your editing program. But once it's gone and created the quick shot, it'll go and be playable. So you can play it. And this is what the quick shot looks like directly off of the drone. This is the helix mode, speed ramps through most of the clip and then slows down at the end again. You can go and turn off the enhancements that it added by clicking the little magic wand. And once you've done that, it'll switch to the original file. So this just shows right here, the original file was 43 seconds long. And as you can see, there's no speeding up to it whatsoever. But you click on that little magic wand again, and it will begin playing in the DJI created quick shot. And as you can hear, it did add some cheesy music, so it's not my cup of tea, but if that's yours, there you go. And that's pretty much how all the quick shot modes are. The one that I'm looking forward to most seeing is the asteroid mode. This, again, is not one that I've ever played with before, so I'm interested to see how this looks. It already appears that it was generated. Look at that, there you go. There is the asteroid mode and pretty cool for what it does, that it goes and stitches all that together and creates a 360 image. Really like that. So there you have it, there is how you access all of the quick shot modes. Now that I've went through all of the different modes, how to use them, and then also showing you how to access them, that is quick shots. So now I'm gonna move on to those smart autonomous flight modes. And those are in regards to the tracking that it's got built into the drone. So I gotta swap out my battery, but after I've done that, Let's go and hop on my electric skateboard and I'll show you some of these modes. All right, so sorry about the audio change, but I gotta record from the GoPro because we're gonna take off on my electric longboard over there and do some tracking shots. So just a quick little life hack. First of all, I gotta start my screen recording or else I'm gonna kill myself later. Uh, but a short life hack is that you can turn on phone charging inside of your controller. So if your phone is about to die, which in my case, I'm at 33% right now. So I'm getting a little low and I do wanna charge my phone so you can just turn that on under control and turn on phone charging. And then your phone will begin charging from the remote controller's battery, which is super cool because then you don't have to worry anymore about your phone dying. So right here is pretty much about the most ideal scenario of why you may want to use autonomous flight modes like this, where it goes and tracks you. That's simply because I'm gonna be moving around like so, and I don't wanna have to worry about piloting my drone at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is go and draw a box around myself. You can do this around people, you can do it around animals, you can do it around buildings. It can lock onto anything and it does it very well. So first of all, the default mode here is spotlight. And what spotlight does is it will move the drone and gimbal to keep the subject in the frame at the same exact spot that it was when it began filming. You can move the controls to go and recenter the drone and you can move the drone manually. So if you just want the drone to keep locked on a subject and you want to manually pilot your drone, then this is the mode for you. All you gotta do is worry about flying around and it will stay locked on automatically for you. However, I am moving, so I don't wanna have to worry about moving around manually because that's just too much work. So a cool thing that it has is Active Track. Now, Active Track has a couple of different modes. It's got Trace and it's also got Parallel. In order to activate the Active Track modes, you do have to be within a certain distance of the subject, as I'll show you right now. So I'm gonna turn on Trace and press the go button. So basically what Trace will do is wherever you start your drone, whenever you take off and your subject begins to move, Trace will just simply follow your subject. It won't go and do anything special really other than just follow behind the subject. So if you want a following shot, this is what you are going to want. However, it's not ideally what I wanna do right now. So the other active track is pretty cool and that is parallel. So I'm gonna stop this flight mode, go into active track again. 
bring the drone within distance of myself so then it is close enough to enable active track modes. And then I'm gonna click on active track again and then click on parallel. I personally think parallel is the coolest active track mode because once you click go and you start moving, you'll see it will track me and it'll go and stay parallel to myself. So it won't go and move around any willy nilly crazy distance or anything like that. It will go and just completely follow me. This thing can fly pretty fast. So if I get up to pretty high speed, it will keep following me. So right now I'm going about 13 miles an hour on my board. Because it's an active track, it will go and avoid obstacles. So if there was a telephone pole or something that pops up, it'll go and know. So finally, the last autonomous flight mode that it's got here with tracking is point of interest. Point of interest is basically like the circle quick shot mode, but it will go and stay locked on your subject and just continue circling around as long as the mode is enabled. You can go and disable it, but it will continue moving as long as you have it enabled. So this is something that you're really gonna wanna pay attention to your surroundings. For me right now, I've got telephone poles, so I'm gonna have to go up to a decent height in order to avoid those. But as I back up and am high enough to pass those cables, all I got to do is go to my point of interest mode, click go, and start a speed. You can adjust the speed at which it goes in circles around your subject, and you can go and expand the diameter of the shot just by pulling back on the sticks. And as you can see, it'll get a really, really wide shot now, but eventually it could lose your subject as it did me so i'm gonna actually move closer so then it can lock back into myself because it clearly is not sure where i am right now and just to show you the stopping of the emergency stop there you just press the return to home button and it stopped so as i lock back onto myself get up to a safe altitude and go to point of interest i'm gonna leave it as is and i'm gonna start moving so as you can see i'm not moving the controls whatsoever and it will continue to trace follow me as I move. Overall, this just gives a really unique looking shot as it continues to follow the subject even as it moves and does the point of interest. So I'm getting pretty close to other power lines now, so I'm going to stop this mode. You can stop it on the app itself. So there you have it. There are the autonomous flight modes of the Mavic Air 2. What I'm gonna do now, pretty much go as fast as I can on this board, just to see if the drone can still happen to track me. It's locked onto me still, even though there's really not much of me in the image. I think it helps that I'm wearing this bright orange shirt, so it makes the contrast between the road and myself really easy to see. But I'm just gonna stop talking because you're not really gonna be able to hear me with the wind of while I'm going fast speed. With that being said, let's take off and go. So I've got to say, I'm pretty surprised. This does have a top speed of 40.25 miles per hour. I'll leave the kilometers per hour up here on the screen. But I got up to 22 miles per hour on my board, and I wouldn't have guessed that it would have been able to keep up with me as well as it did. It kept me locked in, and it moved really fast. So really, my only big complaint that I've got about this autonomous flight modes is that the active track mode and point of interest really complain quite a bit about the target being too far away from the camera, which I find pretty ridiculous because the drone is really only about 50 feet away from me right now, which is really not that far. And as far as I know, it does it through the pixel peeping of the drone itself. So I'm not sure why it complains so much about me being far away, especially when spotlight mode does perfectly fine at picking up me as a subject. But the second I go and click on active track, and try to turn that on, it just says the target is too far. So I find that pretty annoying, but otherwise, when you do get it locked onto yourself, it does a very great job at keeping up with you. And the most annoying thing about it is as long as you start the mode within a distance that it's happy with, you can press go, and then you can end up moving your drone back and it will continue being locked onto your subject. So I'm just really not sure why it complains so much about that, but there you have it. 
So now what I've got is my drone locked onto my car and because this is a larger object, I expect it to do a better job at maintaining tracking as I'm moving. But as you can see, it will stay locked onto my vehicle and continue moving. And since I'm in parallel mode, it will continue to go and track with me. I'm now getting up to about 33 miles an hour and it is still locked on. Now since I'm in sports mode, I'm gonna get up to about 40 miles per hour in my vehicle and just see how well it tracks. And I've just now hit 40 miles an hour. Seems to be catching up and keeping up with me pretty well. I do wanna say that the battery of the drone itself is now at 15%, so it's likely not putting out its full speed, but it is getting up to about 40 miles an hour, which is pretty dang awesome. So because my battery is low, I'm gonna land the drone and talk to you about, is it worth it to use these autonomous flight modes? That's about the most sketch landing I've ever done with this thing. So there you have it. There are the autonomous flight modes that the DJI Mavic Air 2 boasts. And in my opinion, here at the end, I do gotta say that they are just incredibly useful. Sometimes they can get you in a predicament if you aren't paying attention to it. These aren't just like completely autonomous flight modes where you just let it go, especially since the Mavic Air 2 doesn't have side facing and upwards facing obstacle avoidance sensors so it's really not fully covered there in that sense but if you're flying in a wide open environment and you don't got to worry about it running into anything then these are incredibly useful modes to know about and know how to use so with that being said i hope you found some value out of this video and if you're still watching until this end then make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos because i'm going to be making a lot more content about the mavic air 2 as well as continuing to make content about the Mavic Mini. But this drone was sent to me by DJI and I do have to send it back soon. So I do wanna make a lot of content about this before I have to send it back. But I do have a DJI Mavic Air 2 Fly More combo coming in the mail very soon. So there will still be content after I have to ship this back. But with that being said, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below as well as subscribing for future videos. Also, watch my last video by clicking up there and some random videos should be down there. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching until the end. See you in the next one. Peace.